What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am back home, been working on the Red Brick House. Shout out to my man, Jet D, who came through and saved the day for me getting up on the roof because I'm a little scared of heights. But Jet is the most interesting man in the world. He has no fear. He took care of pushing that chimney over like like a champ. And it enabled us to actually get a whole lot of work stuff done. But I'm back here doing the work for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, a couple things. We know uh, there's no new news on the Michael Irvin situation where um, – he has been pulled from the NFL Network um, broadcasting um, while they sort out whatever it is that's going on. Um, there's allegations from somebody who we don't know what her allegations are. All we know is enough for uh, NFL Network to basically say, hold up, wait a minute. Michael Irvin says it was like a 45-minute you know, conversation in public, nothing physical. And, you know, they have been out being drinking and it was like, I don't even remember what the heck's going on. So we don't know. And hopefully this is nothing. Maybe this is just an overreaction on somebody's part and so forth, because we all love the playmaker. So right now we have news on the Cowboys. I know it seems like uh, it's just the beginning of the off season, but there really isn't an off season. And here's where um, there's a lot of moving parts right now because I don't know how many of you realize this, but the league year starts just five weeks from now. And when that starts, you have to be under the salary cap. And you got teams like New Orleans that are sixty some thousand dollars over the salary cap, and they're going to have to either restructure or let go a lot of contracts, um, as well as our Cowboys that are seven million dollars over. Now, there's a lot of things that they can do, you know, restructuring contracts and so on. And you know, right now, there's so many people, so many people that are out there that are putting out content that you don't know what's real and what's not. You, you know, I'll be honest with you. You don't know what's real and what's not. And now, because it's so easy to make things look like it's a legitimate site, you know, where it's a little change here and there, you think that it's actually, you know, the real deal. I mean, for example, Google, excuse me, don't Google, uh, go to YouTube and look up Dallas Cowboys, and you'll see all these sites where, you know, uh, Stephen A. Smith is brutally honest and stuff, and you click on the video, and the video's got, doesn't even have Stephen A. Smith. It's a different show altogether. And so that's where you know that there's a lot of fake stuff out there. So we've heard, you know, some different people talking about the Cowboys are nearing a decision, you know, with Tony Pollard on the franchise tag. Well, of course they're nearing a decision. You got to decide if you're going to use it in less than two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. The 21st is when you have to decide, you know, you got two weeks if you're going to use the transitional tag. The, you know, franchise tag or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, in the same sense, if you're looking to say we need to get some cash, you either have to cut some people or you have to restructure some people to get underneath of the salary cap. And then you have some time to see what you're going to do. And it may be that some of the guys we're looking at, you know, like Zeke Elliott's situation, there's not necessarily a sense of urgency because the best move for Zeke Elliott is actually making him a post June 1st cut. Because then you're going to maximize the saving. You cut them now, you're going to still, you're only going to save about $4 million. So it behooves you to wait on that one, in which case you can't use the money now. Another thing, another way you can get more money too is by extending players. And I'm not talking about Dak. Now, that's, you know, it's a whole nother ball of wax. That is literally, you know, one of those things that you can't talk about because, you know, people are still, you know, get rid of Dak, Dak trade Dak and all that. But I'm actually talking about the two big ones that we have right now coming up, which are C.D. Lamb and uh, Trevon Dix. C.D., because he was a first-round pick, you actually go, he's going into his fourth year, has the Cowboys have the option of picking up the fifth-year option. So here's the thing that's kind of crazy about football is, and I can 
say why people say it's the, like the plantation, you know. Um, when you think about, I remember what Charles was describing the combine as like you're a herd of cattle going to auction. You know, as you're paraded through in your underwear to get your physical, you're getting poked and prodded by, you know, 32 different teams, and they're looking at all your x-rays and your pedigree and doing psychological tests and everything else on it. Um, yeah, they're, they're literally buying you. But the NFL holds all the cards because when you're drafted, of course, it's slotted. You can't negotiate as a rookie. You're basically, you know what you're going to get paid. Okay. And that's for four years unless you're a first-round draft pick. Now, chances are, if you're a first-round draft pick, probably you're going to be pretty good, which is why they put the fifth-year option. Fifth-year option pays you more money, but it's still not like you were a free agent. If you are second round and behind, then they do a contract for four years. You can't negotiate it you know, until after three years. The thing is, on average, NFL careers only last three years. So the average NFL player doesn't get to that second contract, in which case they got you dirt cheap. You know, hypothetically, you know, had Dak Prescott, you know, failed, his career would have been $680,000 three years, and that's it. Bye. See you later. So, for Diggs, Diggs has one more year left on his contract. And we already have seen Diggs had deleted his social media presence following the Cowboys um, because some fans were kind of upset. Not upset like they are Dak Prescott, of course, but looking at it where he had interceptions that could have been game changers or, you know, a hit that could have been, you know, a, a, a incompletion or an interception that could have been a game changer and so on. So the question is, is will the Cowboys decide to go ahead and do their contracts over? Now, here's the thing. You actually want to do a contract while there's still time left on the contract. And you say, why would you want to do that? Well, one, you're getting in before there's appreciation. Remember when Dak Prescott got $40 million, You know, and it was like basically Pat Mahomes and then Dak Prescott. And now... You look at the list of all the guys that are, you know, Aaron Rodgers is 50 and uh, Russell Wilson is like 48. You know, Joe Burrow, no, Joe Burrow hasn't gotten his yet. Joe Burrow is going to be north of 50. Um, but Josh Allen's like 46. And, you know, you've got like nine guys that are more than Dak Prescott. When Dak got his, man, everybody went crazy. Now it's kind of like, eh, probably by this time next year, it'll be at best middle of the road unless he gets an extension. So it behooves you to do it sooner than later. And we know that the sour cap's going to blow up down the road because of all the new money that's coming in there. So with CD, CD has the fifth year option. So they've got this year that they own his rights and they can by May 1st, by May 1st, if they pick up the fifth year option, it's $17.9 million that they have to pay him for that year. Or they could go ahead and put an extension on it. But it behooves you to do that extension sooner than later because here's what you could do. You could say, you know, we're going to give you a five-year, $100 million extension on your contract. And you could say that it's, you know, $60 million guaranteed money and so on. Write them a big fat check right now. But then you have two more years on to the length of this contract to go ahead and hide the money. This is why the Cowboys talk about we want Dak Prescott for 10 more years because they're saying, yeah, we can spread that shit out and put voidable years on it and, you know, keep the cost down low like they did with Tyron Smith. But that's not what players want. Te players want the shorter window so that way it don't work out. I can go elsewhere. Give me, give me the money now, and I want some more again. Um, and so – you have that. Now, with Diggs, this is his fourth year. This is it. So you need to do a deal with him or you'll need to franchise tag him the offseason. Now, the question is, 
could either of these two players hold out and say, you know what, I want my contract now? Because, you know, again, you could lock the two of these guys up for this year and next year and not pay them until later. In which case, you know, you got them at a cheaper cost. But it be, would behoove you. I, I will say, if you're looking for cap relief, the Cowboys are really good about when they sign a new contract that that first year is real low and they usually get cap relief. So that was one way that you could get some more cap relief now. Now, here's the thing. Diggs seems to be the one that would more than likely want to hold out. But the question is, can you really hold out? And here's the thing. You really can't. Remember when the salary, the, the collective bargaining agreement was being redone? And you had like Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson saying that this was a bad deal. But, you know, I keep thinking about, um, let me see if I can find the clip. Hold it. The clip is teared up. Is this? Okay. Listen. Prisoner is to be flogged before the entire regiment. Not with a whip. No. Oh no, wrong, wrong. Sorry, that's being flogged. Hold it. It's this one. Sir, from the water pop. Can anything be done? They've got families. We'll protest this through channels later on. Attention, battalion. Yes, Attention! Battalion! You men enlisted in this regiment on the understanding that you would be paid the regular army wage of $13 a month. This morning I have been notified that since you are a colored regiment, you will be paid $10 a month. Regiment, fall out by company to receive pay. Where are you going, boy? To get paid. $10, a lot of money. $10, a lot of money. Yeah, and so when Russell Wilson and those guys would tell you, like, yo, man, you know, this is a bad deal. You know, when, when the younger guys are like, Shh, I, man, I, I'm getting more money now than I would be, and I probably ain't getting another contract, and I can smoke some weed. You know, $10 is a lot of money. They signed this agreement, and the problem for the players is it basically, the, the owners put in this basically this time bomb if you're holding out, see, it used to be like when Zeke went to Cabo, when he came back and signed the contract, all that, you know, fines and stuff were, oh, it's okay. It's forgiven. Not anymore. They're not forgivable and they're bigger. So this is what happens if they decide to hold out. Training camp holdouts by players under contract are largely going to be a thing of the past because of more severe penalties in the 2020 NFL collective bargaining agreement. Teams are required to find players who aren't on rookie contracts 50000 per day with training camp absences. Rookies on contracts are subject to $40,000 a day. Oh, but wait, there's more. There's an additional penalty of one-week base salary. So, a game check. A game check. Uh, for each preseason game, not, not a game check for a preseason game that you miss with player signing contract is unre- okay. So the ones that doesn't refer to are unrestricted free agent, first round picks playing under their fifth year option. Um, and um, if you are franchise tagged and you haven't signed the tag, because technically you're not an employee of the team until then. So, if you decide to hold out even just a week of training camp and miss a preseason game, that's a game check. And the team has the option, if they feel like it's going to be a prolonged 
hold out that they can basically just say, sit your ass down. This year doesn't count, which means they still hold your rights the next year. So when we're talking about Diggs, he can be unhappy about not getting another contract, but in the end, there's nothing you can do about it. The team holds all the cards. Now, I would think that the team would rather have a happy Diggs than an unhappy one, and knowing that they can work a contract where they can get some cap relief now to make possibly some other moves, then they probably would do that. Because let me, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared like I should be. Um, It's kind of like um, when Zach Martin signed his second contract. It took his cap number from like, 12 million to like 7 million for the first year. So if we look at Diggs's contract for this year is $4.8 million. So you could basically turn that into about a $2 million hit and give him a long-term extension for this year. Um, CD lamb is about the same thing. So technically you could save yourself some money. By getting those deals done now, it's not a whole lot because they're not that big, um, but kicking that ball down the road. So that's a little look into will we see those two players hold out? I don't think so. Just You just can't anymore. All right, good people. Hope you're having a great day. I'll see you soon. Peace.